So this is going to be part two of the uh, tips and tricks, uh, I guess, series that I'm working on. Um, I wanted to kind of work on a model uh, that was already designed. I think talking about the design process might be a bit much for for this series. Um, you know, I want to focus more on using the tools and how I use them. Uh, so for the second video, I'm going to use, I want to focus on uh, using a car that you guys can actually access through the stock content. Uh, so if you pick the concept car by me, um, I'm going to use that here, this one, as the base for this tutorial. And you can kind of follow along. I had a, another video I made a, maybe a few weeks back um, showing how I uh, did the line work on this one. Uh, so you can watch that. I'll link to it in the uh, description below. Uh, this is actually kind of a derivative um, or something I made based off of uh, the asymmetry car uh, I did a while ago that you can find on my Sketchfab uh, site or profile there. Uh, so I'll just get started with this. I think I'm going to start out doing some sections um, and show you how, how I lay out kind of sections uh, before I start getting into surfacing. Um, this kind of helps me understand uh, while I'm building the surfaces what I want them to do. Uh, so we'll just start by coming into the ink tool and turning on pressure, uh, and coming to the settings, turn on symmetry. Uh, I'm going to leave all this stuff the way it is, um, just for this one. Uh, and then I'll come into the ink tool and turn on planar, actually. And then uh, use the half pull method to kind of snap this perpendicular to my symmetry plane. Um, one thing I did notice, see it's snapping to the middle there, so you can line up these axes uh, with the symmetry plane there. I'm just going to kind of roughly put that in the middle of the wheels, like that. Change the color to black, and I'm actually going to delete this one. Oops. And then just kind of start roughing out what I think this section might want to do. I think I actually want to, and you, actually this is kind of good too. Because you can see here that this point is actually higher than the, the kind of uh, section uh, on the mirror plane here on the symmetry plane. So I know I'm going to want to bring that up uh, later on. So I'll just kind of roughly do this. Um, uh, and now I'll just go in and edit these points. And you can see that just snaps there. I'm going to turn the ends off. And kind of, I'm actually just going to turn down the weight of this one a bit. These are a little thick. Um, and as I go through this, I'll kind of add points here and there and kind of edit these about. Um, but one trick here, I'll actually turn off the symmetry for this for this one. Um, but you can see here that these points, it's kind of hard to get them to line up because there's no way to set a curvature or, or tangency across these symmetry planes. Uh, so a little trick I like to do is do the grip copy method with the constraint on so grip pull the right trigger and that'll pull it straight out um, which will keep these two points in line with each other which is a good way to get tangency and then I'll just drag them back using the constraint tool till that one snaps actually we should probably turn symmetry back on for that and then that one snapped there I'm just going to delete that one I went over that point so now you can see when I pull on this point you'll always have a nice curve through here. Uh, so that's kind of a good way to keep sort of a curvature across your symmetry plane. Uh, I'm just gonna turn down these points a little bit. It's a little thick. Um, so, yeah, so that's good. Now I'm just gonna come back and pull this point. I don't think I have another one here. So I'll just add another point. So actually, that's a that was a bug that was happening last time. It might be this file. I haven't noticed it in anything I've made in the latest update. But this, since this is an older file, it was made in a previous version uh, before the new uh, the new user interface and some of these tools. It kind of makes this line thicker than the weight that it was originally made with. So that might be file specific or um, the software itself. I haven't noticed the bug lately. Um, but that's just something to be aware of here if you're going to be messing with this file. So I'm just going to kind of make sure these intersect there. Kind of pull these points up. 
Oh, that's the end of that one. So that's good there. Um, and you can see these these curves obviously are sticking on the plane uh, from that. So we'll just pull this down. Maybe this has a, maybe this has a deeper kind of valley through here. I'm not sure if I want that to be a hard hard break here. Yeah, maybe it's a softer kind of transition, and it fades out through this. So maybe what I'll do is uh, copy that and edit it a little bit. Maybe it kind of tapers out. So this is just kind of indicating maybe where I have a surface. I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep it like that. Um, but again, you can see here. Uh, but again, you can see these are kind of, I'm laying out boundaries for my surfaces and you can kind of add as many boundaries as you want or indications of um, uh, your edge creases uh, but for this I think it's okay maybe I want this to be sharper here so I'll add a couple more points next to each other to kind of add that break bring these down we want a little positive surface through there um, yeah that's not too bad I'll probably have a nice hard edge on this as well we'll see once I get the surface in there I'll kind of decide what I want to do um, it's one thing to kind of draw curves and you know indicate what you think a surface is going to do but once you start seeing the volume of the surface it might change like in here I'm not sure if I want to have a break here or if I want a smooth transition um, but I'll decide that later um, so there that's probably the first one it's not quite over the center of the wheel but that's close enough for this uh, another place I might like to add it is here somewhere in the a pillar somewhere through a pillar in the middle of the windshield um, and kind of at the where this fender might start blending into the body that might be a good place to start showing uh, uh, or ending surfaces and having ones that transition here. I can already see that I want to move this curve um, so it kind of comes out to the wheel arch here. Yeah, there's probably some sort of blend in there. Um, so we'll just move this. And then again, just draw it a kind of rough section. Come out, down. So. I think that's what I want it to do. And then I'll just come in and start editing these. Oops. So you can actually see uh, with the constraint tool with both hands, you see that gray one. If you if I pull uh, the move tool now, or, or if I want to move something, it'll start to move it along that axis. Oh no, that's actually snap. Oh, well that's on a planer. Um, so let me get out of that. If I say I move this, it'll start to follow that axis there. Um, but so that's a that's just a another tip for the kind of constraint tool. Move that there. This one I'm not really going to worry about it being completely tangent through there. Um, it's kind of close enough. And again, just kind of coming in and editing these. Uh, you know, typically there are kind of offsets for you know moldings and stuff like that. But I think I'm going to keep this section pretty consistent through here. Um, maybe there's a, you know, the, the A pillar has got some section. It's probably going to be a little bit rounder through that. Um, and this is going to be a hard edge or, well, maybe not a complete crease. Maybe it'll probably have some radius at some point, but I think for now, I can leave that like that. Um, here as well, there's definitely going to be negative kind of section turn the weight back up through here uh, and then I'll just move these points up so they kind of intersect the curves there um, we'll make that a little shorter let that start tapering down um, so I'm actually gonna I probably want this to come all the way to here. That might be a good ending point where I break off a surface from here 
and start transitioning it to two different surfaces, uh, as well as this one. Um, I'm actually just going to turn off the planer for this. I don't like that plane being visible. Uh, so this tool is, or this curve as well, I'll just come in and add a point. This way I can start indicating that this flares out a little. I don't know if I want that to come all the way to the wheel arch edge. It might start to fade out somewhere in there. So that's just indicating that. So there will be some sort of surface transition in this area, um, which I'm probably not going to get to be perfect because there's no blending, um, but I could probably fudge something to kind of get the surface volume in place. Um, so that's good. So I've got a couple sections in the front. Um, and now I'm just going to kind of go through the rear. I'm not going to talk through these unless I have some tips to share. So this might just get sped up here. Um, so again, kind of when you're doing these sections, you can kind of see how, you know, some of these lines might need to be edited because you can you get a better sense of what that section is doing. So it's not that bad of an idea to kind of revisit some of these points, and kind of change some of the section or some of your line work to kind of fit these sections here. Um, this seems a little flat, so I might pull that up. Kind of make sure these are intersecting um, even this that's just kind of these thinner lines are kind of indications of where i think there might be a transition or surface transition um, so i think those are kind of enough sections to give me an idea of what the surfaces are going to do um, maybe even i'll come and do some in the in the rear here and with this you can kind of choose a random axis um, something like this corner might need to be defined, but it's not on a clear axis. Uh, so maybe somewhere, somewhere like right through here. That's not bad. Um, but you just gotta kind of pay attention to where this point is and see where that's gonna go. I'm not sure what I want it to do. That is a bit of an odd section. Um, but that's okay. They're just indicating and uh, indicating what they might be doing here. I might not keep these either. They could just get deleted. Um, like that one. Yeah, I don't really think I like that there. Oops. Um, or maybe even it's just kind of I'll, these. Are, this is a pretty apparent area on what I want to do. This one is a little bit trickier. I think it's going to be like a negative, positive. I think that might be a light there or something. Maybe it comes back. 
then out. I don't know. This one I might actually this this area I might just kind of wing it with some of the surfaces. Um, but another thing I wanted to go over are actually uh, wheels here. Uh, these are kind of sketched to indicate, you know, uh, you know what a rough kind of idea of what the layout might be. Uh, but if you wanted to be a little more realistic, or if, actually if you wanted to get into doing spokes, like stylized spokes, um, I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you, if you already made a wheel, you know, you have an established axis that the wheel is on, um, and say you wanted to come in and, and make, uh, you know, spokes and stuff like that, it might not be quite lined up with what you want. So a good way to recover the axis of something you've already made is to hover over it while you're in your either the revolve tool or if you have the symmetry on uh, in any of the ink tools or the line tool. Uh, so with the with your left hand, um, you're going to half pull on that axis and with your right hand hover over uh, something you currently have. Uh, so when you have the the red sphere there, like you're gripping it, just kind of intersect it. And then when you, with your left hand half pulled, you can move towards this kind of floating axis there and it will snap to it. Um, so now you have the axis for that. So you can come in and start drawing out spokes or something like that. Oop, actually you can't move it, rotate them like that. You have to come in and edit the points. Um, so this is just kind of a rough, rough example. Four spoke. I probably should have done a five spoke. I'm not a fan of four, four spoke wheels. Um, but anyway, that's a that's a good way to kind of recover an axis um, from an revolved a revolved object. So you can go in and and start doing a wheel design. Um, let's do something different here. Um, so you can kind of see how you can get some interesting stuff. Um, you know, just start throwing in different colors. Um, and actually with this, I found if you <clears throat> edit the shape, something a little flatter, um, with the, maybe a different size, um, that's kind of a good way to kind of create stuff like that. You know, you can go to town and kind of do whatever you want, um, but I thought that was a, a useful tip. Um, so <clears throat> when you're kind of going back and making detailed wheels or tires, um, that's one way to do it. So uh, again, with the actually with the Revolve tool, so now I have that axis already there. Um, I'm going to go to the point mode. Oh, see, I got rid of it there. So again, just hover over it half pull and then it'll stand go towards that little uh I don't know widget or kind of axis widget and it'll snap to it. So now you can kind of come in and maybe start doing a tire or something. And that's a good thing with this. You just come in and edit those points. So it fits kind of, this is a really thick tire, but you get the idea. Um, just kind of coming in and making these different shapes. So anyway, I thought those were some useful, useful tips. Um, that's going to be the end of the video for this one, a little shorter. Uh, next time I will start surfacing the vehicle um, and maybe kind of do some design tweaks uh, before I do that. Uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed, um, and I'll get back to you with another video soon. Thanks, guys.